Hey gang, back with another video for you today. I've got a special guest here with me, Dimitri from Goldfield and Banks Fragrances. How are you? Good, Sebastian. How are you? Lovely to see you again. Doing good. Guys, I wanted <laughs> to do a highlight of uh, Goldfield and Banks Fragrances, and I thought it would be best to do that with the man behind the brand, Dimitri from Goldfield and Banks. And today we're going to discuss... Goldfield and Banks fragrances. And we have a giveaway as well. Stay till the end to find out what the giveaway is. But if you want to discover this brand and you still haven't, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Dimitri, thank you so much for doing this video with me. I'm sorry you had to wake up so early to get on camera with me because you're in Australia. That's fine. That's fine. I'm always, I'm always excited to see you. You know that, Sebastian. Oh, thank you. It's been a while. It's been two years almost we've seen each I other. Know. I know, I know. Don't mention it. I mean, it makes me sad. It makes me feel sad that we can't but you guys are, But you guys are doing good in Australia? Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, We're in lockdown, but other than that, we're fine. Um, yeah, I mean, we, I, I don't think we have been working harder than... Uh, we have been working harder than ever. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Um, so, yeah, because there's nothing else to do than just work. You know, work, we don't, work, work. we're not allowed to see anyone, we're not allowed to mingle, we're not allowed to go to restaurants, not allowed to go to cafes, theaters. So what do you do? Work and eat and exercise yes. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have to exercise. Yeah. So I, I guess I just wanted to kind of give an overview of your brand to, to my audience and subscribers. Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your brand. How did it get its start? So... The initial idea of Goldfield and Meng started with, um, with Australia. I mean, it started with a trip. I mean, I came to Australia uh, about seven years ago. Um, I went on a business trip. I came here on a business trip, sorry. And, um, well, one of the things that I wanted to do was to explore you know, anything that's cosmetics and fragrances. And, you know, when, when you travel for business, you know, what you do is you go to department stores or perfumeries and you want to discover things that are local. You know, when you go, to, I love going to Italy, for instance, and discover all unknown brands, you know, with great stuff, you know, like soaps and perfumes and stuff. Um, so I came here and I extended my trip with another four or five weeks and I traveled all around Australia. And um, one of the first things I did was to go into a department store and to look for an Australian perfume brand. And it didn't exist. So I was talking to the beauty consultant and she, she said to me, she said, well, it, it doesn't exist. Uh, we don't have an Australian perfume brand. And I was like, what do you mean? You have all these ingredients here. Because obviously I come from the perfume industry. So we've been, we have been talking about Australian sandalwood for years mm. and about blue cypress oils and about Baronia. We knew about those ingredients from overseas, you know, from Paris. And so um, it was interesting to, 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 to know that the cosmetics industry was booming in Australia, but there wasn't any perfume. There was not one single brand that would um, celebrate the extraordinary beauty of this country and its botanical richness. And I thought, well, hold on, there is an opportunity here because obviously mm. the perfume industry is saturated with so many different brands and all the brands, they all talk the same thing. We have the best ingredients. We do this, we have that, roses from grass, jasmine from grass. And I sort of, I was over it and I wanted to do something different. <laughs> I wanted to, but it is, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to, to, ex to share my experience of Australia with my audience and, and let them discover new ingredients, you know, something more exotic, something that is more contemporary and, and, and out of the ordinary. Do you know what I mean? Like when you have different raw materials that are, that are new on the market or haven't been used before, that's when you have an interesting topic and to me, Goldfield and Mengs is an interesting perfumery because it's perfumery of the land. You know, it comes out of the soil. And that's what my brand is all about. Oh, cool. Yeah. I knew that. 
<laughs> I okay. wanted everybody else to hear it as well. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but that's but super cool, and that's why. Um, and also, you know, the, the the name of the brand. A lot of people asking me about the name of the brand. So, Goldfield, you know, sandalwood in Australia grows on fields of gold. Mm. So obviously, when I heard about this story, I was mesmerized. I mean, I I was. It made me dream of the country, of the land, of something far away. You know, we have thousands of customers buying our fragrances all around the world, dreaming of Australia. And that's another big part of our brand is, you know, to take the people, to take our, our customers on a journey and to make them dream of all these beautiful places here in Australia. And a lot of people won't ever travel to Australia, but at least with through the fragrances, you have a vision, you have an idea of what Australia could be very aquatic or woody or dry or, you know, crisp and aromatic, you know, with all our forests and rainforests and stuff. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's traveling. That's what it's all about. It's emotion and it's traveling. Great, good idea. But you're not a native Australian, are you? No, no, no. I've, I actually, I have my citizenship, so um, super cool. Um, but no, not at all. Um, I'm actually Belgian French, so my mom... Um, is Belgian and my father unfortunately passed away. He was French. So my family was 50-50 uh, French, Belgian. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. So you moved there then. Is it, did you move there before you went on? I guess you moved there after you went on that trip. Well, I, one, I, one. when I came back from that initial trip, I obviously I met my partner here. So I was traveling back and forth for one year um, before taking the decision because I was, you know, I was turning, I was getting closer to the 40. So um, I made this decision to move then after a year, I thought, okay, you know what? I've been in this perfume industry for so many years in the luxury industry for many years, 28 years. And I felt it was time for something new, something different. And everyone is in Paris. You know what I mean? Everyone is in London. Everyone is in Milan. And I wanted to do something different and I wanted to go to Australia. And because it's a very modern country, very, you know, quirky, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things happening here in terms of design and innovative things. And, and I felt that the perfume industry, um, it can be African, can be Australian, can be Scandinavian, you know, look at Barido. Um, there's even Japanese brands coming out with fragrances today or Chinese brands. So okay. I think for me, the future of the perfume industry is definitely going to be a lot more cosmopolitan than it used to be because the all French right. all doing the same thing. It's all roses and grass <laughs> and jasmine. So, <laughs> so I think, you know, and the world is ready to, to, for different things. Look at, look at yeah. fashion. Yeah. Fashion has always been a lot more interesting you know we have fashion from asia we have you know fashion from africa and american designers are brilliant you know so i just think that um things evolve and and yeah it's it's a challenge but it's it's great to be part of this this challenge and to be part of this journey and today we are very happy with the success that we that we experience and this is thanks to a lot of hard work and a lot of um shaking the trees you know, mm. <laughs> um, and putting Australia on the map as an, as a country of resources and of raw materials. That was, that's important. Wow. Yeah. Mm. So you launched your brand in uh, what year? Mm. I think I launched my brand in November. I mean, we had our press launch, I think on my birthday in November, 2016, if my memory is correct. Or 2017. So at the end of the year, the brand will be five years. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. Time flies, isn't it? It goes so And you, you la launched with... Well, I know originally you... Re I reviewed your, this fragrance for you. Desert Rosewood. I, yeah. I launched the brand with four fragrances. And we, we, of course, we still have them in our collection. So we have Desert Rosewood. We initially had white sandalwood we have blue cypress so very um all very woody based and then of course one fragrance that i think now your audience knows very well pacific rock moss so was the pacific rock moss an initial launch or was that did it come after 
Oh, look, you still have the old version um, of Pacific Rock Moss. So we oh, have there's the new a new version? version? I have to send you the new version. Oh, wow. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, we, it's, it's actually a change of packaging. So the fragrance more or less remains the same, but it's a change of packaging, especially. Um, what was your question again? So you initially launched with four and then uh, Pacific Rock yeah. Moss launched after? No, no, no. I, I launched with four. Pacific Rock Moss was in the mix. So oh. we had Desert Rock, Pacific Rock Moss, White Sandalwood and Blue Cypress. Oh, so Wood Infusion came after. Wood Infusion came after. Oh, um, okay. Beautiful scent. Um, yeah. And then look now at the end of the year, we will have, yeah, exactly. You still have the original collection. So two of them, you need to replace. <laughs> ASAP. Oh, okay. <laughs> new packaging. So which one um, has new packaging? Yes. Uh, Pacific Rock Moss and which one else? Well, the thing is, you know, the brand is gender neutral, but we feel that um, like Desert Rosewood, Blue Cypress and um, Wood Infusion have very grounding, woody, sturdy notes. So we want to keep them dark, dark label, dark cap. And the rest of the collection obviously has changed into white labeling and a golden cap. Kind of like the white labeling for Velvet Splendor. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So the rest of the collection is now white and gold. Um, well, gold of course, cap. Bohemian Lime has the white label as well. Mm, yeah. So, yeah um, exactly. so then which fragrance of yours is the most popular? And tell us about it. <laughs> Have a guess. <laughs> is it Pacific, Pacific Rock Moss Rock or is it uh, Bohemian I'm, Lime? Well, Actually, both are very, very close in terms of sales, but obviously Pacific Rock Moss beats Bohemian Lime. Um, really? Because, well, because it's a success story. I mean, um, the fragrance, I, uh, do you remember initially when I launched the brand, um, we came out with Pacific Rock Moss and it was considered as one of the first aquatic marine scents on the market in the niche industry. And it was yeah. not done. I remember people telling me like, oh, you know, the niche industry doesn't have aquatic fragrances. You know, it's all about those, those oriental notes and, and, and those woody notes and, 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 you know, gourmand and all that. So I remember having, you know, um, pe having people saying, oh, it's so not done in the, in the niche industry. Mm. Anyway, it turns out that Pacific Rock Moss today is the number one fragrance. Um, it's extremely popular. Um, we sell one, I think, every 15 minutes. Um, so wow. It's, That's yeah, awesome. It's, it's a beautiful uh, fragrance. And, you know, also when, when you know the country, when you know Australia, you will notice that in the summer it gets very humid and hot. And so people overall don't really want to wear very strong, powerful fragrances in the summer. So Pacific Rock Moss is really, it's, an, it's more like a delicate aquatic marine um, aromatic scent um, with a beautiful longevity, but it's not like a lot of people were expecting this fragrance to be like, as they call it in the US, like a beast mode or with massive protection <laughs> and all these words. No, no, not at all. It's a fresh, it's a fresh aquatic scent with beautiful um, lemon and sage and geranium and, you know, all these, these, these ingredients that make the fragrance very coastal, um, it's like you, you're walking, you know, along the coast and have a beautiful evening or morning, morning walk. Um, and it's, it's a fragrance that you want to share with your partner. It's a fragrance you feel comfortable with when you wear it. And, it's, um, and that's what Pacific Rock Moss is all about. It's about this reminiscence. It's a reminiscence. And we have a lot of um, customers buying from overseas thinking, well, this is the ultimate, you know, coastal scent. Um, with this, a lot of people dream i think it's also because of the color you know the blue color i don't know if you can see it very properly um yeah. beautiful uh, blue color yeah exactly um so it's um so it's, you haven't mentioned um, beachy i got a beachy vibe from this yeah yeah no it's it's 100 beachy um but again it's beachy but at the same time there is a, an elegance to it which I, I love about the fragrance. And then, of course, today we have, you know, a lot of customers, they value the fact that it's an elegant, subtle aquatic scent and gender neutral. 
on top of it because usually marine scents are quite masculine. Whereas this one has, you know, white flowers and it has, you know, musk as well. And so it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, uh, a beautiful gender neutral um, scent for all year long, I would say, because we, we don't feel like a, a spike in summer or in winter. <laughs> no. We, yeah, we, we have customers wearing it all year long. And there is always summer somewhere, right, on the, on the planet. I know. You guys have a different summer than we do. <laughs> yeah, we're in winter here. You're in winter there. I know. I know. But a beautiful winter, though. Beautiful sunny beautiful day. Winter. Oh, yeah. 18 degrees. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so that is your most popular. Would you say then Bohemian Lime? I think you said Bohemian Lime is really, really close behind it. And this launched Bohemian last Lime. year. I know. Bohemian Lime is... Where is it? Where is my... Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah, I know. Bohemian Lime is... I know. It's such a beautiful scent. It's a fragrance that... It's very different. Um, you know what? It's got a very Bohemian touch. It's, you know, the name of the fragrance is Bohemian Lime. But obviously, we have, and on top of all the citrusy notes and the uh, finger lime, Australian finger lime, which, by the way, we have here. I don't know. Yeah, tell us about it. finger lime because it looks funky looking. It's like a little pot, yeah, like a pot <laughs> like that has a... little round things in it. I know. It's well, when you uh, open it up, when you break it, it's actually it's got like caviar coming out, like little caviar. Have very you eaten it before? Thingy. Yeah. Actually, you find it in in Corsica as well. Corsica, France. I mean, it's... Corsica, France. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, yeah, um, so you find it in, in a few few countries, but it's originally, obviously, it's from Australia. It's an Australian native um, ingredient. Um, and also the, the, the peel is very um, zingy. Um, it's extremely sharp. It's, an, it's a sharp note compared to lemon or bergamot or ma mandarin or orange. Okay. Finger lime or caviar lime is more... Um, it's more sharp and this is exactly what i wanted in the fragrance i wanted the fragrance to be like an explosion and you know a fusion of of citrusy notes but on top of that i wanted it to be super long lasting and it's very hard to have a, a citrus fragrance that lasts long and uh, on this particular fragrance we've added a lot of vetiver patchouli which makes the fragrance very gender neutral for women also that love, um, you know, patchouli and that love grounding notes and green notes, very tropical, very rainforesty, um, and extremely, um, it makes you feel good. It's a, it's a feel good fragrance. It's you know? uplifting. It's super uplifting. I have my moments in the morning when, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what to choose. Um, and then, you know, when I feel a little bit down or I feel a bit more, um, yeah, I don't know how to say it. If, if I feel a bit down, I sort of um, wear Bohemian Lime and straight away it lifts me up. Mm -hmm. It gives me energy. It gives me that boost that I need in the morning. And, and it's beautiful. And it's a super successful fragrance, mm -hmm. mainly also because of the fact that it's a long-lasting citrus scent. And this is very rare. And on top of that, it's a scent that you can't really, there's nothing on the market that really, really smells like this one. I told you it smells like a Moscow Mule cocktail. No, but I remember you mentioning when we launched initially, you said something about li lime ventus or something. Yeah, that, kind of. I mean, ventus. <laughs> it's very zingy. It's spicy, but also very effervescent. Yeah. There's like a sparkliness mm. about it. It sparkles. Know, you can totally get that from this. No, I know. I know. And you it's know, delicious. What? It's delicious and it's a fresh, again, fresh fragrances, but that's what Australia is all about. Australia is all about, you know, the outdoors, you know, open air um, and freshness is something super important. But, you know, it's, it's almost like you opened up a can of this very exotic soda from some tropical land and it's bubbling over and you're smelling the, the essence of it. It's kind of what it reminds me of. I know, I know. And I think that the niche industry needed that. Um, and especially today, because all those fragrances are all very, you know, they, they're all very heavy. And, and so I think freshness, you know, is, is a good thing to have in, in the niche category. Why not? Definitely. It very, very it really is uplifting. Definitely does yeah, wake you up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 
we can almost drink it. It's a vegan fragrance, by the way, for those who are watching and want vegan fragrances. So this one is vegan, so you can almost drink it. Almost drink it, but don't drink it. <laughs> don't drink it, exactly. <laughs> it's got some, uh, some beautiful uh, uh, organic beetroot um, alcohol as well. Yeah, it's really nice. But, mm, you know, my is. favorite happens to be your latest one. Oh, my right God. There. Words, I That's know. so good. <laughs> so delicious. I don't know why it is so good. You, do you remember? I think I started working on this fragrance in 20... I think it was 2018. And I think I saw you in Milan and I had already a sample of this one. Did you now? Wow. Mm. So I, so this fragrance has such a beautiful story. Um, we have a company in Australia that produces agarwood in the Daintree rainforest in the north of the, the country in the tropics. And these people invited me and my partner to stay a weekend, mm. stay over the weekend and um, to share with us, you know, the art of producing, you know, uh, to infect the tree because, you know, the aquilaria tree, you need to infect the tree and, you know, then it, you know, it, it wounds and then you need to wound it and then it infects and then, you know, you have this formation of, of the oil, the agarwood, the fungus. Did you know. call it an aquilaria tree? Yeah, aquilaria tree. That's what tree. it is? Yeah. Hmm, okay. That's what it is. Before it turns into it turns into an agarwood tree if you want um and these people so so obviously we knew agarwood you know is very popular in the industry wood um but i couldn't believe that australia was actually producing it that this company was producing it and so wow. they started uh, distilling um about three years ago and i said oh my god i want that oil obviously it's not native to australia because you know we we have our, our native collection where we use native ingredients. Mm. But I had to find um, a way to integrate this agrowood into my collection. And it's not a native. So I decided to create a collection called Botanical Series. Um, okay. And that, this fits in there. And that fits in there. And Botanical Series is a collection of fragrances. So now we, we, we will have two more fragrances, in, you know, in the span of a year, um, Ooh, coming into this exciting. collection, and where I where I use ingredients that are not necessarily native to this country, but that are harvested here in a very exceptional way, very sustainable way, um, you know, in the best conditions, with the most loving people, you know, the farmers, and you know, all of that. And, wow. and it's my way of, of integrating those fragrances within an Australian fragrance brand. So, so we have, obviously, we have the agarwood and our next fragrance will have lavender from Tasmania, a beautiful, um, which, is, which, which equals the, the quality of the French uh, lavender from the Provence, um, really? which has wow. been imported. Yeah, it has been imported a hundred years ago. So a hundred years ago, Australia, especially in Tasmania, that's where they started to harvest um, uh, lavender. So, so, and I think that this is what I wanted to do: is I wanted to create a collection where we where we highlight the innovation and research and and you know side of the of of, of the things, and that's what Australia is so known for for its research and development, and you know being very innovative um, and especially in ingredients because they're very popular in, in skincare but not necessarily popular in perfumes and that's what I do is I really support these people I really want to I really want the world to know about these um, manufacturers about these suppliers of, of these oils um, and pay tribute to them and so of then course share, share with our audience and with our customers all these beautiful new ingredients and, and new stories cool so then where does the vanilla come from in here so we have a vanilla from tahiti okay tahitian yeah. vanilla vanilla from tahiti yeah 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 tahiti um it's more it's not your usual sweet vanilla i don't know if you can smell it in there it's it's more like um I get there caramel an, and butterscotch. And butterscotch, yeah. You know what it, it you know what it is? It's probably saffron. There's quite a bit of saffron in the fragrance. Mm. And wow. saffron sweetens things up. So 
what we have in this fragrance is we have a lot of tobacco. Oh. So for this fragrance, I decided to work with a perfumer called Hamid Merati, um, who's based in Dubai. You know him, right? He's amazing. He's, in my opinion, one of the best um, perfumers when it comes to agarwood. Like he so well knows how to balance woods and wood species. And um, so... Yeah, uh, he 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 was being. He created this. With me. <laughs> he was yeah. He was being very patient with me because we had we had I think a thousand submissions, um, because I wanted wow. to tweak it and I really wanted the fragrance to be so beautiful and that's why it took so many years to launch. Initially, we wanted to launch it last year and then you know COVID hit and we launched for him in Lime, which was great, and now was the time to really launch this first fragrance, and also because it's a whole process, you know, when you are so far away from everything, we are 16,000 kilometers away from France, Europe, um, 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 where everything happens in the industry, obviously. It, it was hard for us to, to, to work on a faster pace to, to launch this fragrance, so we took our time. Mm. We really took our time to develop the scent, to develop the brand, the botanical series, um, and so now we're ready for the second one and the third one, and they're all going to be absolutely exceptional and beautiful. Wow. Great. But yeah. Probably a bit more darker, a bit more, um, because Australia is not all about beaches and it's not all about, you know, um, rainforests and, and, and crisp um, forests. You know, we have a lot of woods and a lot of desert and a lot of um, heat, you know, like a lot of heaviness. So it has a dark side. Yeah, oh, 100 percent. Well, it has a dark history, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah. So we have, you know, we have contrasts. We have the native collection being quite fresh and subtly woody, and and you know, with the florals and stuff. And then we have the botanical series, which is more like um, very enveloping scents. Let's call it that way. Cool. This is really delicious. My favorite. Oh, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, yeah. It lasts forever. And we have, you know, and it's great to read all these comments from people sharing on Instagram or whenever you read it, a review or, you know, it's, it's such a great feeling because we've worked so, so hard on this, on this brand and we've worked so hard on this fragrance and it's so emotional. Sometimes I get really emotional when I read the comments and, and yeah, That's you know, awesome. when you, when you've, you, when you've achieved it's something. It's a baby. <laughs> It's a baby, but when you've achieved something and you touch people's hearts with a perfume, that's when, you know, you, you think, okay, I've achieved something, you know? Um, yeah. And, and that's, so you have nine babies on the uh, birth into the world. We have nine babies and we have a 10th baby coming up at the end of the year. Ooh. A 10th baby. baby. It be, yeah. It's going to be a, um, an, an Australian exclusive. So it will be launched uh, exclusively in Australia. Oh, and darn. Yes. Yeah. And one, one, probably one store elsewhere as an exclusive. And then a massive launch um, on the 1st of February next year. Okay. Because Can it's, you give um, us a clue of what it is? Yeah, well, it's it's a feminine fragrance, so I know we talk about gender neutral, um, but this one is very feminine. It is um, an olfactory category or territory which we haven't touched before, which is a gourmand, oh. gourmand, spicy, woody, um, and for this one particular fragrance, I took my inspiration from an ingredient called um, desert peach. I don't know if you can see something. Here. Desert peach. Wow. It's Very interesting. Desert peach. It's also called Kwangdongs. Have you heard of Kwangdong? It's a native. Um, it's a native uh, from here. Um, a lot of indigenous people use it in the north. Um, so it's, it's edible. It looks a little bit. It's edible. Absolutely. So it looks a little bit, you know, like um. um raisins or dried raisins or and Plum it smells prunes. like very caramel sweet um and it's yummy i think mm. that's the word that you use right yummy something yummy. yum so, yum delicious exactly. so for us it's the first it's the first um the first time where we will 
really focus on 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 a feminine scent and it's beautiful i don't know if you you have been following me lately i was in broom in the north of the country did you did you see my pictures when i was traveling up north in the country where did you uh, post them uh facebook instagram i stay off of facebook as much as i can <laughs> right but Good yeah point. i've seen your photos before yeah so um and this is probably one of the most beautiful beautiful um areas in in the country and i would probably say in the world you know david attenborough was there as well mm. um and um it's it's a region in terms of colors and everything it's just absolutely mind-blowing and um and yeah so sort of you know the fragrance the ingredient the location you know we always celebrate the beauty of the country and its botanical region so the beauty was is broom beautiful area um and then and then those fruity notes fruity spices you know those native spices and and um yeah so we're very excited about this project um exciting and yeah and excited for it to come out like soon hmm. because so exclusive until we, february 1st yeah exactly well the thing is that we have our summer here in australia so it is um even though it's a gourmand fragrance we still consider it to be more sort of mid-season mm. spring fall summer okay. uh, maybe winter who knows i mean people will tell um and especially with a name like sunset hour you would imagine something being more you know um, that's what so, it's called sunset hour yeah exactly oh okay so yes good yes, name yes. Mm, gorgeous <laughs> um so um so yeah so the great thing is that it's um it will, will be out in australia before the summer hits and and yeah because the country has been in such lockdown it's our way to give something extra to the country and to give an exclusive to the country and and to our audience here and um and yeah so so we have we have that we have a new fragrance coming up in the botanical series as i mentioned and then we have so many other things coming up Wow. I'm, looking at, I'm looking at the calendars and I'm thinking, oh my God, there's so much more, so much more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Let's talk a, a little bit more about a couple of more of your fragrances and we can wrap it up. So we discussed uh, Pacific uh, Rock Moss. We discussed Bohemian Lime. We discussed Silky Woods. Why don't we discuss Desert Rosewood next? That seems to be a fairly popular fragrance, right? Very. Yeah. And you know what? It's comes and goes and but it's a very popular fragrance and especially in the united states for some reason um maybe because a, i reviewed it oh right yeah well probably i mean we had a few really really good reviews on this one and i think people also start to you know to get acquainted with the brand and you know we sample a lot more we sell a lot of samples so people can choose and you know they can yeah. redeem it um which is great as well um so you know the great thing about desert rosewood is that it's based on a, a wood species called buddha wood oil mm. yeah i've heard buddha wood that. oil oh it's amazing it's, it's divine it's actually it's a wood species the oil itself is is very dark ambery let me have a look i've got it here very ambery um look i don't know if you can see it oh wow that's dark very glasses yeah exactly but when you smell this this wood species and it's only available in australia it actually has it smells like saffron oh wow it's like saffron it's got a spicy touch to it um and in my opinion it's a very noble wood species and an oil it's very never noble. heard of buddha wood until you mentioned it yeah so it's only available in australia not many perfumers it's not really present in the perfumers palette in paris or switzerland or new york um but um but if if perfumers want it i mean obviously they can source it from australia it's of course it's available there's a lot of a lot more other perfume suppliers in the world that have it um but in very small quantities because obviously you know it's not it's not so common um which makes our fragrance very very special so the the fact that we have blended it with cardamom ambergris gorgeous vanilla from madagascar which is more sweet um we with you know orange 
the, the, the fragrance is, is such a beautiful, um, comforting, um, yeah, comforting leathery scent. So one it's of, called Desert Rosewood. Do you use rosewood? Well, that's how it's called. So Buddha wood oil. Buddha wood is rosewood. Okay. It's called Desert Rosewood. Okay. So that's why I named it Desert Rosewood. But then obviously sometimes you read reviews from people saying, oh my God, I smelled it and I couldn't smell the roses. There's, there are no roses in this <laughs> fragrance, you know. <laughs> roses <laughs> is not synonymous to roses. Anyway, um, but, but you hear so many things, right, online. It's, it's ridiculous. But anyway, so it's a woody, woody fragrance. Um, and one, yeah. one person that really I'm used to those it. things, hearing those things. I know, right? Gosh. It's yeah, it's absolutely crazy. But yeah, we we have an Australian singer wearing this fragrance, and it suits him so well. It's he's called um, Nicole Kidman's husband, Keith Urban. Oh my god! Oh wow! <laughs> Keith Urban. He's been wearing this fragrance for such a long time. And, wow, the um, country singer. The country singer. Yeah, he's very popular in the US, and um, it suits him so well. And ever since we know that he's wearing it, and we feel that the fragrance has something quite. I don't know rock and roll it's dark and it has a it has something very very sweet and dark, very, um, sweet and dark. exactly that's yeah. how i would call it so I, I love this fragrance myself i think it's um i shouldn't be saying that it's uh, oh, i love all my fragrances but this one <laughs> this one in particular is one of my my, my all-time favorites because i know how hard it is to blend that fragrance every time we have a new batch, you know, I, I get a bit anxiety because I think, oh my God, is the fragrance going to be perfect? Because it's hard to blend this, this Buddha wood oil. It's not an oh, easy Oh, wow. One. Okay. So it's challenging so then. It's challenging because batches may vary, you know, that's what happens. I mean, that's what happens when you work with pure oils sometimes, you know. I'm not saying that we use 100% natural oils because that will be... Mm -hmm. you know, outrageous to say that but um we we tend to use a lot of natural oils and that's what you have you know uh, batches can vary you know um colors can vary and things like that but i love this fragrance absolutely cool. love this one. it's a nice one for sure mm, it's beautiful so and it will remain in the collection for as long as i live you know i do get a creaminess in there too it's a smooth wear uh, amber grease is that what it is Amber grease, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we have benzoin. You know benzoin. I love benzoin. That's the, oh. I think that's where we're getting the creaminess. Yeah, benzoin. I love. I've always loved benzoin. It gives um an incense slash sweetness to to a scent. Um, and I love also that. Very long lasting, and I love that. Yeah, that's yeah. my my cup of tea in terms of fragrances. <laughs> So let's see, we should talk about one more of your fragrances. Uh, we haven't spoken about wood infusion, white sandalwood, blue cypress, velvet splendor, or southern bloom. Which one should we talk about? Southern bloom. Southern bloom, okay. Southern bloom, I know. So this one features baronia flower with this most beautiful color. I know. But I where does the color. color come from? Does it come from the cassis? Uh, so we have cassis, yeah, we have black currant in the fragrance. Good, you remember. That's great. Yeah, this fragrance is amazing. It's one of our best sellers everywhere. Um, it's it's a great scent. Um, the, the uniqueness about this scent is the fact that we have used Baronia, mm. again, from Tasmania, um, which is one of the most expensive um, ingredients in our industry. Um, it grows Baronia flower. Three, three weeks, Baronia flower, um, Mega Stigma, which is the brown Baronia. This one grows um, during very short, what we call the short September bloom in Tasmania, three weeks only, and then 10 days of distillation, and that's it. So wow, once a year, and it's incredible. It's beautiful. Um, it's um, it's quite unique, and it was used in a Dior fragrance in, in the sixties, in the early sixties. But then, really? obviously, they banned um, the use of it because obviously there's only so much you can produce a year. It's quite expensive. It's ten thousand dollars a kilo, 
concentrate oh, wow. of um, of the absolute of Bronia. So it's very expensive um, and it smells like berries. Uh, it has a very, um, you know, like berry tea and berries and um, it's very powerful, extremely powerful. To me, it smells very tropical because we have um, Ilang Ilang and I love Ilang Ilang. Um, I love coconut. I love jasmine. There's a lot of jasmine. Yeah, it has a co co mm -hmm. tropical touch in here. Yeah, a tropical touch. Um, we have a lot of creaminess, thanks to iris, beautiful buttery iris. We have sandalwood, um, orange blossom. Oh, God. Wow. We have so many beautiful, beautiful ingredients. And most of them all natural, which is great. Hence... Um, the fact that th this fragrance is slightly more expensive than the rest of the collection because we have this Bronia and, um, and a few other ingredients that make it super exclusive and, and obviously a little bit more expensive. Makes sense. So mm. then this is a definitely a popular show. Do you think this is more popular with men or women? Well, funny enough, um, it is obviously very popular amongst uh, our uh, female audience, but... Can you imagine um, a lot of men in, in the U.S. wear it as well? Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, good to know. I know. It's funny when we look online, either they purchase it for their wife, um, but we have seen quite a lot of uh, Instagram reviews of people, men wearing this fragrance, saying, oh, my God, it's the best fragrance ever, um, office fragrance, whatever. Wow. And to me, it's a very feminine scent. Because obviously it's you know it's a it's a floral, of flowers and fragrance yeah so it's um yeah osmantus as well we've got a bit of osmantus in the fragrance so very very Fruity. Asian Oriental I love it yeah uh, it's a gorgeous fragrance beautiful beautiful scent cool. it, it's a real masterpiece um, in my opinion created by a by a perfumer here in Melbourne um, and myself. And again, it was a massive challenge to get to get that beautiful creaminess in the fragrance. Wow. Because Bronia is Bronia itself, when you smell it, it's it smells very um it's a bit pungent, you know, it's it smells like squeezed berries that you that you soak in, in green tea and um Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very interesting one, a very interesting note. Hmm. Um but look, I'm, I've never I'm, smelled I'm, the flowers, so I can't really yeah, well, you should come in September. That's when next month that's when it all starts again. That's really close. <laughs> it's very close. I know, I know, I know. Next but you year. should come. It's amazing. It's different, you know. It's uh, it's probably not as pittoresque, I would say, as you know, visiting the beautiful lavender fields in in the Provence. But still, it has it has something very very. Um, different in australia you know you have all the gum trees you see in the in the on the horizon you see all the gum trees the fields look different the air mm. smells pure because tasmania you know it's, it's a little tiny island in the, in the south of the country um but it smells pure there's a lot of uh, a lot of um, areas in tasmania where there is no pollution wow not in the air, not in the water, not in the soil. And this is quite unique. So having ingredients that are, you know, that they grow on that kind of soil in that kind of uh, environmental conditions, it's unique. It's yeah. unique. And that's Sounds what gold nice. is all about. Cool. So what should we look forward in the future? You have that exclusive fragrance coming out. You have a lavender fragrance coming out. The exclusive one and the lavender mm -hmm. fragrance are completely different, right? Yeah, very different. Yeah, yeah, very different. Um, yeah, very when different. When does the lavender and then we have... come out? The lavender is coming out in April next year. Oh, so that's next year. Yeah, next year. Okay. Yeah. But then April. Before, before April, you will launch the gourmand in February worldwide. Yes. So you have two coming yeah. out next year. Two coming out. No, we have actually, we have. Oh, the third one? So there's a third one coming Ooh. up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A third one coming up. And depending on the situation, you know, 
with the world. We might even have a fourth fragrance coming up. Um, we might push Jeez. one forward. Okay. But, um, Can you give us a clue on the third one? Um, you don't have to if you don't want to. No. But we're always well, the curious. Third, I can't give you a clue on the third one yet. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I, th I think we, we will be celebrating five years of Pacific Rock Moss. So... Mm. Okay. XA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I can tell you. And then the third fragrance in our botanical series has an exceptional um, has an exceptional ingredient as well that comes from one of the islands around Australia. You know, we have all these Pacific islands with all these beautiful things. Um, this yeah. is the botanical series. No, this one is a name. Oh, no, this one. This is the botanical series. This is the botanical series. Anything else. So you have the lavender going in this, and now yeah. you're speaking about a third one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which is meant to, to, to come out in 2023, early 2023, but we might push it forward. Again, depending on the situation globally and you know, see how it goes with, um, um, with the pandemic and, you know, because it's very hard to you know, juggle between pandemics and lockdowns, stores closed. So we need to make sure that we make enough money because we are not, you know, we're not a big global company like so many other brands have millions of dollars to spend. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very careful with our budget. Yeah. Cool. Exciting stuff coming up. We'll definitely yeah, look yeah, forward. Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. We have um, our, you know, our sample collection will have, um, now nine fragrances as well um so yeah other things will come up as well but yeah some smaller things but yeah very cool. interesting and speaking okay. of sample set you have we're doing a giveaway a worldwide giveaway of five of your fragrances yeah, in so 10 ml discovery kit 10 ml so it's not in one set um so they are individually uh packed so we have um we have desert rosewoods new and this is actually new we have desert rose within 10 mil we have wood infusion in 10 mil we have southern bloom in 10 mil and then of course our two best sellers bohemian lime in 10 mil and um pacific rock moss oh. so yeah they're new they're brand new they're just on the market um and we're happy to to give one set away cool so yeah. the giveaway uh to participate in the giveaway guys just put down what you liked about this video and which of the fragrances sounds great to you? And put down your country as well. Um, put down your state if you're in the USA. Good luck with the giveaway. Thank Fantastic. you so much, Dimitri. Thank you so, so much, Sebastian. Um, what a pleasure to, to talk to you and, and catching up. I mean, I wish we could catch up with a glass of wine or two or three. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last time we, we met up, we were... On our way to a party. My God, the party. Jesus. You remember that party? <laughs> I remember that party. Oh, my God. So many I perfume lovers were walking party. together down the streets in the south of France. <laughs> I know. I know. I loved it. I enjoyed it so much. And I miss that. I'm, because that's, you know, I mean, that's. I met some of your Australian part. friends there, too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. No, no, it's amazing. Um, but, um. All of that will come back one day, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Oh, absolutely. And then, you yeah. know what? We will party 10 times more. And Hell harder. yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so, so much for All having right. me. You're welcome. Um, thank you. And, um, and once again, say hi to San Francisco. I I'm miss here. San Francisco. Say hi to, so to our beautiful people from Z, Joe, and you know, all the other people that you see. And, um, and I hope to see you very soon. Yeah, soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Guys, Welcome. thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please follow the directions on how to participate in the giveaway and uh, good luck with the giveaway. And stay tuned for more videos very soon. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.